My name is James Renwick. I'm the Training and Development Manager here at the Johnstone Orion Group Training Center. You're about to watch a video on the A2L refrigerant changes that are coming in early 2024. As most of you probably know, regulations like this tend to come out in drips and drabs and sometimes even change right up to and sometimes even after the regulations take effect. As of March 30th, 2023, the information you're about to see is accurate. But, like I said, it might change. If you folks out there have questions or find out new information, please email me personally at james.renwick at johnstonesupply.com. And if you want to make sure you're getting these emails and videos in a timely manner, go ahead and click on the QR code. That'll get you subscribed to our Training Center newsletter. Now, on to Eric Dillon, our master trainer, with the A2L information. Hi, my name is Eric Dillon. I'm the senior instructor at the Johnstone Supply Training Center here in Fresno. So some of you may be asking, what's gonna happen with R410A? R410A unfortunately is gonna go the way of the dinosaur, just as R12, R22 did. Uh, it's gonna start with the phase out of the, its use in new equipment. Uh, so we're gonna see the manufacturers start to make that change, possibly this year, maybe next year. Uh, but either way, it is coming. California Senate Bill SB 1206 will prohibit the sale or distribution of bulk new HFC refrigerants such as 410A starting January 1st, 2030. After that, we will only have access to reclaimed R410A. I would recommend that you start preparing for price increases. Panic will drive some of it, but truthfully, most of our 410A comes from China. Shipping costs are skyrocketing. Metal prices are also going up, so the tanks are getting much more expensive as well. So a lot of you may be asking, when is this going to take effect? When is it going to affect us here? Well, unfortunately here in California, it's already started to take effect. Uh, kicked in January 1st, 2023 this year. Uh, but right now it's only affecting small self-contained appliances uh, like PTAX, window units, uh, residential dehumidifiers, and portable air conditioners. The next date we have to worry about is January 1st, 2025. In California, that's when the rules will kick in for residential and non-residential or commercial equipment. The EPA has also proposed this rule, although it hasn't been finalized. And the third and final step will be January 1st, 2026, and that will only affect VRF equipment in California. And as we mentioned before, a total ban on new 410A will take effect on January 1st, 2030. We will only have access to reclaim 410A after that. So now we're going to discuss a little bit about how this is going to affect the HVAC industry. Uh, our industry has been kind of stagnant for the last 50 years or so. We really didn't have a lot of technological advances uh, until about 20 years ago and things started to change slowly. Uh, over the last 10 to 12 years though, we've seen a real change in technology. Uh, it's affected the equipment, the efficiency that we're dealing with. The, look, think about your thermostats that you're putting in. Uh, our industry is gonna react to this just like everything. We'll bob and weave and make it happen just like it needs to happen. And of course, for the HVAC industry, we gotta consider the things that are gonna change for us, like the mechanical code. We can expect some changes there. The fire code is gonna be changing. It's currently under review and is supposed to be released sometime in July. Uh, for the HVAC industry, we also need to consider there may be some changes to the DOT code or the Department of Transportation as far as how we transport and handle the materials in our vehicles. And of course, depending on where the fire code lands, where the mechanical code lands, uh, we can probably expect to see some changes as far as what's required of us uh, things that I, I would expect we should be looking for is refrigerant monitoring, either in the equipment that we're installing, which may come from the manufacturer that way, or we may be adding stuff. Uh, but we may also have some structure, you know, certain structures may require monitoring uh, because these are slightly flammable refrigerants. And it's going to be very important to remember that A2L refrigerants, while they're very similar to what we've been using in 410A, they are also very different. And so it's going to be very important to get proper training for use and handling of these new A2L refrigerants.